Good morning, folks. We've got space weather impacts we're awaiting within 24 hours. We've got an active region in need of monitoring and two relatively advanced papers on climate and catastrophe. We begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on the sun was a bit snappy. Numerous morphologies and filament releases of a small nature as the coronal holes cross Earth-facing longitudes. The solar wind is calm right now, but the enhanced plasma stream from those coronal holes should begin arriving tonight. It should be a moderate to strong impact, and as we saw yesterday, there may be a little CME coming our way as well. Would still need at least 36 hours for that one in all likelihood. But those shouldn't produce too strong of geomagnetic activity, and I'm actually focused on the limb. The earth-facing spots are alone and simple, but the tiny signature you see at the side there, it's an active region that took an incredible surge in activity over the last 24 hours, and now it's coming in to face Earth. We'll be watching that one closely here this week. Let's be reminded about the dozens of papers describing how melting polar ice, heating the polar region, changing the Atlantic circulation parameters, all of these lead to a heat-driven reversal of the temperature trends into cold, one of Earth's great safety mechanisms. Now, while we do perpetually scream that the solar particles are left out, the interplanetary magnetic fields we went over yesterday have been ignored, and so has the weakening geomagnetic field. There is still just something so satisfying about watching them blame humans for the Atlantic changes, and yet there being utterly no difference in the outcome. Whether it's our version changing things at the poles in the Atlantic, or we play devil's advocate and let them call the blame, the finish line is the same. The end of this interglacial and a return to an ice age. Then, wow, it's a good thing we spent considerable amounts of time recently on Nova Science. Those mass loss events we just recently discussed, the ridiculous name for stellar micronova, is now solidly the case at Betelgeuse. This paper was investigating the last lone argument for a different mechanism of its dimming, a potential stellar flyby. Now it should be noted, flyby outbursts are surely a thing, but they end up concluding that no, it was not a flyby, leaving only that other option. Website members, if you need a refresher, put that paper on top of the deeper look we just had a couple days ago going over the newest Nova Science. Consuming that information puts one at the literal front of the field. We greatly appreciate your support. Our books on climate and catastrophe are available at otf.cells.com. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Check out that deeper look. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.